guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a ranking video and in this video I'm going to be ranking my four palettes that I picked up in the month of February. So things did get a little hairy in February because I definitely ended up not liking one of my purchases closer to the start of the month so I did kind of do some shuffling around so I actually have five palettes to rank this month and without further blabbering, let's get into it. So technically I can't rank this palette because I haven't tried it yet. I'm hoping to try it tomorrow, which is Sunday. So hopefully you guys will see a look with this palette. You guys can ring the shame bell whenever you want. You would have seen me talk about this. I did end up picking this up in the end of February because I was so, so curious. Teresa's dad's video on this palette is probably what like really swung me over the edge. But a lot of YouTubers I enjoy watching have reviewed this palette and it made me, you know, do a little second glance at it. I definitely have had my moments with Jaclyn Hill because I've bought some of her products that she's had like issues with. Actually, my main thing was the, the Volt collaboration that she did with Morphe. I didn't like the ones I got and I think there was definitely some kind of issue there with the formulas. So I was pretty disappointed with that, but you know what? I I buy from so many problematic brands <laughs> or like brands that are considered problematic by people that watch YouTube and content creators and it's like you know, I want to I want uh, to support all the problematic people equally, so I figured, you know what? It's been a while and it seems like the palettes don't really have any issues, so I decided to go ahead and support and then I saw Jen Loves Reviews video and I was like OMG Jacqueline. <laughs> so I don't know. I still am going to do a video on it because I'm curious to see if it's good or as good as everyone says it is. I don't know. I'm curious. I do buy other stuff from Morphe as well. So I don't know. It just really seems like Jacqueline Hill can't catch a break. So because I haven't tried that palette out yet, that is going to be the number five palette. Technically though, I think the worst palette I tried of February is the Millennial Pink Palette by Mel Cosmetics. I had mentioned this in the review video as well that I just had such a terrible time trying it out. I definitely didn't want to keep it around and I was going to try it a few more times but I was so over it that I ended up sending it back to Melt so then it opened up a spot for me because I bought the Natasha Denona palette as my first palette then I bought the Melt palette. So I ended up sending the Melt palette back so instead I did pick up a different palette to replace it and then I picked up the Jaclyn Hill palette as palette number four. So palette number four ranking wise is the Melt palette and I think that if I had tried the Jaclyn Hill palette and enjoyed it, I feel like I'm gonna like the Jaclyn Hill palette more than the Melt palette. The Melt palette was really bad but since I haven't tried it I can't rank it higher than this one so um, because of that reason Melt gets number four. Number three is gonna be the Bloodless palette. This is a nice palette. I do like it. I just don't know if I'm like in love with this palette. So I would say right now we're at like a 50% compatibility level <laughs> um, where it's like I don't absolutely hate it. I don't want to throw it away, um, but I'm not like gonna, you know, if like my house was on fire, this is the palette I'm saving. So we'll see. I'm hoping that we will develop more chemistry as time goes on. Um, but so far it's very meh to me, to be very honest with you guys. And if you want to see more of my thoughts on the palette, you should definitely check out my video on the palette. If it's up, I will link it. If it's not up, don't forget to subscribe so you can watch it later. And then I have my next palette. This is palette number two of my four palettes and I'm gonna give it to the Natasha Denona Love palette. So this one I was definitely on the fence about. I didn't love it when I saw it when it first launched. I was like, eh, it's, eh, you know, not really my cup of tea. But once I played with it, I really liked the looks I was able to create with it. So then I felt a little bit warmer, a little bit warmer. So I would say I love this palette about 80%. Like, it's like, I like it. I don't know if like, again, if my house is on fire, I'm not grabbing for this one. This one would burn and I wouldn't have it anymore. It's pretty nice. I'm glad I picked it up. If it were to go away, I wouldn't replace it is kind of how I feel about that palette. And then my number one palette of the palettes I picked up 
for my low buy is the Prelude palette by Lime Crime. Now, I haven't bought something from Lime Crime in a hot second. Like, it's been a long, long time. I bought the Venus palette on Nordstrom. What is that website called? Holt Look. Um, because Lime Crime would go on Holt Look every once in a while. And I think I bought the Lime Crime palette. Oh, it's probably like 20... 15 or so I mean I, I had it a long long time ago and um, I bought it on Holt Look and I didn't really like it so then I never ended up going back to Lime Crime and over the years I've seen their launches come and go and you know some of them have just been like very eh, and yeah I heard some bad things about that black and white palette they did like the Immortalis palette or something it was like glow in the dark and everyone went crazy for the packaging um, and then I saw this palette and the neutral palette and something about this whole aesthetic just like drew me in I love the like the you know old school Roman like painting vibe with the, like the cherubs and the lady draped on the packaging it's just very cool I feel like I'm holding like a little piece of almost like a historic artifact so I like the little story that they're selling here um, for me I like when palettes create like an experience I feel like uh, it means something and all that little detail is very exciting to me I kind of mentioned that with this makeup geek palette like you know the color story is nice but it's, it doesn't really tell me a story and I like when my palettes you know kind of tell that story now if I were to take these shades and pop them in here I think that it would really amp my experience up for a palette like this because it's very generic and I'm like eh but this one it's like oh wow this is so cool like if I saw this on a shelf I'd be attracted to it and I just really enjoy it I love these shades they're so fun let me give you guys a little swatchy swatchy since I haven't filmed a video with this and like this shade seafoam it's so beautiful it genuinely looks like seafoam it's like a beautiful very greeny blue like purpley minty delicious like shade and i think you can use that on your lids it's also a beautiful inner corner highlight like i really dig this palette and i took a picture of this palette and i put it on instagram and so many of you were like where did that palette come from like I didn't even know that palette was a thing so it was really funny because I think it's maybe like I think it maybe flew under a lot of people's radar but I'm here to tell you if you are interested in this color story I would s snag that palette because it's really fun so I will definitely have a look coming up with that palette I haven't filmed one yet but I'm very very excited because I did do a few looks with that palette to work so if you follow me on my Instagram stories you would have seen that already and kind of know that I was playing with that palette so yeah that is everything that's number one and I hope you guys enjoy this video let me know your thoughts down in the comments would you have thought that I was gonna pick Lime Crime as my number one palette of February let me know I want to hear all your thoughts down there and I will see you guys in my next video soon